got uh, ask the question, take action by either removing yourself from the situation, removing that which causes you temptation from yourself, hiding God's word in your heart, and then the fourth tool or action that you have in the book is pray, uh, and specifically watch and pray, and uh, the passage that you pull that application or tool from is Mark chapter 14, where Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane with his disciples. Yeah, and that's an a interesting story, and one that's a, a little bit perplexing on some levels, but Jesus asked his disciples to pray while he goes away to pray and, and to be on the watch, and he comes back, and they're asleep. And that happens uh, twice, I think, in the passage. And uh, Jesus says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Be aware. And so if you meditate and you think about that verse, and Jesus is saying to me to pray, to do two things, to pray and to watch. And you try to think about how do those two things relate together or what is Jesus saying to us. And one thing is to be aware um, of your surroundings in the sense of where do the temptations lie in my life? Am I aware, am I watchful of what could cause me to sin against God, cause me not to do the things that I ought to do? And as I'm aware of those things, I need to pray about that. Prayer is it's difficult to say this, but prayer is probably one of those things that Christians uh, do not implement or do other than in, in uh, a selfish way. I need this, or Lord, whatever, instead of making it part of our lives. And Jesus says, pray about these things. Be aware of what is around you. Don't give the devil um, a foot up in your life. Just be aware of your surroundings, the spiritual surroundings, and the um, things that can happen if you're not aware. Uh, it, it's actually a, uh, an aggressive thing, not a passive thing, where you watch, you notice, you're aware, and you pray about those things. It's interesting in that passage when Jesus says to watch and pray to the disciples, that they might not be tempted. In that scene, the temptation that they have is that they're not doing something. That's what the temptation is, to re to refrain from doing that which he commanded. That, that's right, and one of the best definitions of temptation or, or sin that, that I know is from the Westminster Confession of Faith where it says, uh, or the larger catechism, sin is any want of conformity unto or transgression of the law of God. And basically that says, sin is not doing what God commands, and sin is also doing what God commands not to do. So it's a two-sided thing. We can uh, think, oh, I haven't uh, committed any sin today, but then we don't look at the other side. What did we do that we should have done? And not to have done that, that itself, Sense. So it's, it's a, a, a bigger uh, a panorama of what sin is than we might think about. Yeah, and so theologians use the terms uh, sins of omission, where we fail to do what God commands, and then sins of commission, where we do what God forbids. Right. And uh, that in and of itself, just being aware that those categories exist, is helpful for us to watch. Uh, so now we're not just thinking about what did I do that was wrong. Now we realize that there's a larger world, like you said, of, of sin in our own lives where we also fail to do things. So, so it's that's like helpful to Jesus says, love one another, love people around you. So we can say, I didn't hurt anybody, so I'm good. No, Jesus says, love people. So you, you not only don't do them harm, but then you go positively and you do, uh, you, you love people. So it's important to, to understand.